insects do not attack healthy plants. Hi everyone, welcome to the new video. Today we will be talking about pest management, which was the number one voted gardening farming issue uh, on my YouTube community post. And I've gathered some information and I'd like to share with you those. But firstly, let me start by saying that exactly 10 years ago, I've heard the most bizarre thing ever in relation to this issue. It was replayed on a podcast. The podcast was about soil fertility and I don't remember who the owner of the podcast was or um, who was the guest, but I've heard the statement over and over again over the course of years. So what they stated is that if you maintain soil fertility, if you grow like really healthy plants who have access to an array of minerals, if you add organic matter to the soil, uh, basically if you follow basic sustainable agriculture, permaculture practices, that means you will have no past problems whatsoever. And some of us might get like really offended by the statement because I know there are so many organic gardeners who try to do everything right. They don't use any chemical fertilizer. They don't use any chemical sprays. They, they try to grow food based on compost, like adding organic matter to the soil. However, sometimes they are forced to use some organic sprays. For example, those that can be made uh, in home uh, using chili peppers, uh, garlic, and neem oil. But let me present to you why the statement I've heard on the podcast might be actually valid. So Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education, SAR, published a handbook, Manage Insects on Your Farm. The link will be in the description. It lists various ecologically viable strategies for dealing with pests, but most importantly, they state that agricultural practices that promote healthy soils are a pillar of ecologically-based pest management. Good soil management can improve water storage, drainage, nutrient availability, and root development, all of which may in turn influence crop defense mechanisms and populations of potential beneficial pests. So I think it makes sense when you think about it. It's the same with us. The more nutritious food we eat, the more immune our systems are and the healthier we are. Mari Berberchek, a professor at Penn State College of Agricultural Science stated, the healthier the soil, the greater preventive it is for pest attack because of its increased tolerance. Healthy plants are less attractive to insects than are unhealthy plants, those with a nutrient imbalance. In addition, Dr. Thomas Dijkstra goes as far as to say insects do not and cannot attack healthy plants. Whether it is a surprise to you or not, I think we can only gain by trying to grow as healthy plants as we possibly can. After all, this is the whole point of gardening and sustainable farming. But here, where it gets really interesting. Jeff Lawton, the Managing Director of Permaculture Research Institute of Australia, permaculture teacher, consultant, designer and ed worker, stated in one of his lectures the reasons why plants get easily uh, attacked by pests in a monoculture setting. So in a modern monoculture setting, so modern agricultural practice where only one crop is grown on a field, plants usually drink NPK minerals. Uh, NPK stand for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. So NPK fertilizer is a cadmium salt, soluble in water. So what happens is the plants grow really quickly after, you know, digesting those three major nutrients, but at the same time, they also bloat. So what happens with our artificially fed plants? They get easily spotted by different pests. And once pests detect them, and remember, we're talking about huge field of just one crop grown, uh, they basically stick with it and proceed with consumption for as long as they can. So farmers have no choice and have to use those chemical pesticides. Uh, but they will tell you the situation gets worse and worse every year because pests develop natural resistance to those chemicals. 
it's the same with weeds that develop natural resistance to herbicides. So it's a complete disaster. So that's why you're better off stacking different plants together to create different plant guilds of various layers. And by creating biodiversity, we can encourage nature to take care of our problem. We can attract species that attract beneficial insects, for example, predatory wasps that prey on different pests, or we can plant species that deter different pests. For example, marigolds can repel aphids. But as Mark Shepard rightly stated, without pests, there will be no predatory insects. Think about it. So, according to Mark, it's better to allow pests to exist in our gardens and orchard so that the predatory insects can prey on them. And another reason for that is, according to Mark, uh, some plants have um, some special genetic codes in them and they may resist pests better than other plants. That's why Mark planted more trees than originally desired on his and his client's properties to discard plants in early years that didn't show pest resistance. Moreover, what Mark and other permaculture practitioners do, they use grazing animals to help them manage the pest problem. For example, chickens eat different pests, grubs uh, that attack our root vegetables, and dags eat snails and slugs, reducing their population naturally. What's really great is that grazing animals not only help us manage uh, the pest problems on our fields, orchards and gardens, but they also contribute to nutrient cycling, soil improvement, and can really be integrated into a well-designed rotational grazing system. So to summarize, we've learned that there are many different techniques helping us to deal with pest problems. We know that pesticides are a huge no-no. Instead, we can apply organic sprays that don't kill soil life like it's done with pesticides. Uh, if you decide to buy like ready-made organic sprays, just be sure to read what they contain because sometimes, even though they say uh, they are safe, they may contain some nasty chemicals as well. Uh, so just be careful. Secondly, we can create more plant diversity by attracting beneficial uh, insects to our gardens. So by interplanting different species like nasturtium, borage, marigolds, we can disrupt pest life cycle. We can confuse them by making it harder for pests to establish large populations in our gardens. We can also take care of our soil culture by adding organic matter to the soil. This is to ensure that the soil structure and its mineral composition can support our plants. And lastly, we can use grazing animals that will happily forage in our orchards, eat the discarded fruits as well as the bugs. So we can use a combination of some or all of the above mentioned practices. Let me know in the comments below if you have adopted any of those practices and if it helped you deter some pests. In case you wonder what's the situation looking like in our gardens or orchard, I need to tell you that we've only started this whole adventure. This, is, this will be our third year growing vegetables. So, so far we had two uh, pest instances. One was in our first year of growing winter vegetables. And what happened was we planted broccoli and cauliflower in the same row. And really closely to the cauliflowers and broccolis, we've planted turnip tops which are not turnips, but are like greens. Uh, and I've planted them just out of curiosity. Um, they are in the same vegetable family. And it was really interesting to see that the pests were attacking just turnip tops, just those greens. And, and it was fine with me. Uh, I wanted to eat as many cauliflowers and broccolis as I could, so it was okay. The second instance in our vegetable garden was with potatoes that we've planted this spring. We've planted them in March. Well, we have just at the end, we had the problem with this body. Mm -hmm. And you've got more. Yep. 
So in the last two weeks of the growing season, we've started to see uh, potato beetles, uh, but they didn't affect our harvest. We still managed to harvest perfectly good looking potatoes. Yeah, pretty happy. Some of them are small, some of them are big, uh, but overall, beautiful potatoes. In terms of fruit trees, we've only started planting them. So I believe in two to three years, I will have a better story to tell you in terms of how we manage pests, because I'm sure we will get some. At the end of last summer, uh, we've noticed some bugs crawling on apple tree. And I don't know why, but we just left it. Bizarre, I know. And after a few weeks, maybe two weeks, we've noticed that ants started crawling on the tree and, you know, were all over the place on leaves and they were eating the bugs, the white bugs. Uh, that was super interesting to see and I really regret I didn't film it. Finally, ants ate all the bugs and then the leaves fell because it was the beginning of autumn. The tree went dormant and then this spring everything was okay. So far everything is okay with the tree, the neighboring trees, everything looks good. But about 15 meters away, uh, the same bugs, or maybe not the same, I'm not too sure, but similar looking bugs, white bugs started attacking orange tree. And we've seen ants again trying to get them. So, it's incredible. Uh, okay, um, I hope the video was useful to you. Please hit the like button if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to not miss any future content. Thanks so much for watching.